بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. If any of you believe that the Israelis are going to stop and not take Masjid al-Aqsa, you're deluded. 70 years history has shown us that they've literally wiped out the entirety of Palestine. I just want to quickly go through something which will slightly explain to the brothers. I don't think you can see in the back hall, but you'll be able to see in the front. Can you see this? So this was Jer uh, Palestine when the British mandate in 1917. You see the blue areas? They're the Jewish. You see the green areas? They are where the Palestinians lived. That's it. 1917, after the Belfort Declaration. Then you had a migration from Europe from 1918 to 1947. And then you see the population has increased of the Jews. It went up to about 30 from 6%. In 1917, it went up to 33%. Okay, but you see how it looks. The green period, uh, the Palestinians, where Palestinians live, and the other is where the Jews live. Then we have the 1947, the UN partic participation plan. They wanted to give 65% to the Jews and 45% to the Palestinians. So you see the green part of the Palestinians. You see the orange in the middle. That is Jerusalem. That is Jerusalem, all that. So you see how it looks now? Then in 1948, after the British mandate finished, the Zionists attacked and they took everything and they left 22%, which was the Gaza Strip and the West Bank. So that's in 1948. And this is pictures of the Palestinians being driven out uh, there were hundreds and thousands, 70, nearly three quarters of a million Palestinians were driven out of their homes. These are pictures of them leaving their homes. In 1967, you had the Six Day War, which was Israel against Egypt, Jordan, and Syria. And they took the Golan Heights, if you look at the top, Golan Heights. And they also took the Sinai Peninsula the, uh, from the Egyptians. After that, then they encircled the entirety of the West Bank and the Gaza Strip. So all of it now is now under their control. And they also got the Golden Heights and the C9 Peninsula. Now let's fast forward, because we don't have too much time, to 2020. Now this is what it looks like in 2020. So, okay. so here you have... The palette, all of that blue is the Israelis, Israel. You have the West Bank, and then you have Gaza Strip. And all that red is that everything that which goes in and out is controlled by the Israelis. Nothing. You see, now here, this was originally, remember, 22% was Palestine, West Bank. This is what it looks like now. You see the red parts? That's all settlements. And when you, Allah, when you grow there, they will tell you about these settlements. They're massive, they're huge. They're cities, and they were telling me that they were like few houses, and they're growing, and they're growing, and they're growing. All the time, slowly but surely. So this is all that's left. The countries that agree with the settlements and disagree, that's the world. All the green disagree with the illegal settlements. America, not sure on it. The bastion of human rights. Not sure on it. You've got the, the wall. But well, let me come to this. Checkpoints. These are the checkpoints in the east. No, wallahi, nothing goes in and out. It's the entire humiliation. You have to get a word permit. Even to go into your village, you've got these uh, checkpoints that you have to go through. Their man, you are humiliated. Your women are humiliated. Your wife might be pregnant. They might say you can't go through. And you, your wife has to give labor in the car. Day to day humiliation. Day to day humiliation. All these. Imagine this is the West Bank. 
all those checkpoints, 140 checkpoints, this is what the checkpoints look like. Every day when you will go work and commute, that's what you have to go through. And now here you have Jerusalem. So you have East Jerusalem, West Jerusalem. West Jerusalem, the population, I do apologize, I'm taking a couple of minutes extra, but only be a few minutes. Uh, so you got, the blue is the West Jerusalem. 349,000 Israelis and 4,500 4, Palestinians, that's it. Now you got East Jerusalem, which is meant to be the capital of Palestine, where Masjid Aqsa, etc. are. 220,000 Jews, Israelis, and 345,000 Palestinians. You see, now why I'm telling, showing you this is here you have the old quarter. Muslim quarter, the Christian quarter, the Armenian quarter, Jewish quarter. And the, the number one there, this one here, is Masjid al-Aqsa and that compound. Why I'm showing you this is, if any of you believe that the Israelis are going to stop and not take Masjid al-Aqsa, you're deluded. 70 years history has shown us that they've literally wiped out the entirety of Palestine. And they're not going to stop, they're going to carry on. This was the same place where only one time in his caliphate over 10 years that Umar ibn al-Khattab left Medina to pick up the keys for Masjid al-Aqsa. Why? Because Umar wanted to be martyred and died in Medina. He never wanted to leave. The only time he ever left in over 10 years was to pick up the key for this place. So brothers and sisters, we have a serious obligation here. If you think, if you think that this issue is going to go away, then you are deluded. Israeli history has shown us that they will take more and more and more and the world will remain silent and the Muslim world will capitulate but the obligation still lies on me and you. The Prophet Sallallahu said, go and pray two rakats in Masjid Al-Aqsa. Masjid Al-Aqsa wasn't even in the hands of the Muslims. It came in the time of Umar ibn Khattab. But he knew that they were going to conquer it. He said, go and pray two rakats in Masjid Al-Aqsa and if you cannot pray two rakats in Masjid Al-Aqsa then at least send oil to be burnt in the lantern. The ulama said, what does it mean, oil to be burnt in the lantern? The ulama said, what it actually means is that assist Masjid Al-Aqsa. For those who have ever been to Muslim Spain, Muslim Spain was plus 90% Muslims once upon a time. They had the leading scholars in the world. The second largest masjid in the world was the Qurtuba Masjid. The second largest masjid in the world. People like Imam Qurtubi, Ibn Abdul Barr, all the greatest scholars whose names still are mentioned today, lived and prayed in that masjid. When we go there, we go every year, we take a group. When we, you know when you walk inside, Wallahi, you feel the pain, especially if you know the history. When we walk outside, you always hear the same comment from the brothers. Inshallah, one day we will get Masjid Al-Aqsa, we will get Qurtaba Masjid back. You're worried about Qurtaba Masjid, and your third holiest masjid is slipping from your hands. In front of your eyes, Wallahi, brothers and sisters, if it does slip away, a hundred years from now, Muslims will remember you and I, the 1.6 billion Muslims who daily saw what was going on and did nothing. 